Well, good morning and welcome to the show. Jeff Beals here at your service from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate Company. We're also brought to you by D&M Roofing, Omaha's premier commercial and residential roofing contractor. Glad you've joined us today. This is the only show you'll ever find in the metro area that talks about business expansion, real estate construction, all of the fun things that you want to hear about on the radio and not the things that you don't. And with that, it's time to introduce my co-host, a man who is uh, ready and uh, raring for action, Trenton Megan. You are too kind. Good morning, everyone. It, it is a rare day today. Why is that? It is Jack Beals, your son's 15th birthday. Yeah, my, it is my son's birthday, and it's so nice of you to give him a shout-out. And, of course, there's zero chance that he's awake and listening to hear that. So that's a shame, but I'll let him know that you said that. Well, that's what the YouTube channel and that's what uh, the podcast is all about because he'll definitely hear it sometime. Hey, well, we uh, this week launched a new feature on the new Grow Omaha YouTube channel, and it's called the Brad Williams Construction Update. And on this feature, Brad goes around with his video camera and highlights several construction projects, like the Mercantile and the Performing Arts Center a Music Venue and and several apartment buildings and others. He, he even went out to 180th and uh, Blondo to show the bridge construction that will eventually connect Blondo to Dodge via 180th. And so we highly recommend to take a look at this. In order to do it, we want you to subscribe to the new Grow Omaha YouTube channel. Literally go to YouTube, hit subscribe, and you'll see that video. We also have videos from the show and everything else, but you're going to love that Brad Williams construction video. And Trenton, he promises us, promises us that he'll be doing it every month. At least monthly. And, and that's something that... Not only did he inspire it, he came up with it, and uh, we really appreciate his contribution. And he's been, for well over a decade, if not probably longer, that he's really been a huge contributor to the show, and we thank Brad Williams for that. So go to bradwilliamsphotography.com, and uh, he can be hired for all kinds of, whether you're doing skylines or building projects, he gets up in a helicopter, he gets up in a drone, and um, he's a great guy. Well, Nebraska Crossing owns Saturdays, and today's Saturday. It's a nice Saturday, beautiful weather, so we highly recommend that you take care of yourself, have a little bit of fun, give yourself some permission today to buy something new, and you can do that at Nebraska Crossing, Interstate 80 and Highway 31 in Gretna. And don't forget, uh, you can be like me and have your Nebraska Crossing Fast Cash app, ladies and gentlemen. All you have to do is go to your Nebraska Crossing app, and you hit Fast Cash. You put in your credit card bank information. And then anytime you purchase something at one of the 80 retailers at Nebraska Crossing, always use that app and, or rather, always use that credit card. And then it will send 15% back to your digital wallet. And so if I wanted to right now, I could go to Nebraska Crossing and get stuff essentially for free because I have a bunch of money stored up in my digital wallet from getting so much cash back. And you've already gotten free stuff. I get free stuff all the time. I'm, I'm stockpiling. Let's go into our news of the week, which is brought to you by Eagle Mortgage, eaglemortgagecompany.com, where you can go to get that pre-approval letter. It is bonkers and nuts out there, people, if you're trying to buy a house these days. A lot of competition for houses. If you don't have a pre-approval letter or you're paying with cash, good luck. So you want to go talk to Holly and her team there and go through all the things to help you. It doesn't matter whether you're FHA, VA, conventional loan. They'll take good care of your refinances to EagleMortgageCompany.com. Well, the big news this week, Trenton, is that Applied Underwriters has announced it will resume construction on its headquarters building in Hartwood Preserve in June. Now, a lot of people in the local real estate community were thinking, oh, I wonder. I'm, they were getting a little bit skeptical as to whether it would ever restart. I thought they were putting all their money in landscaping for the other uh, lots because they're doing all kinds of architectural and beautification of the park, of the drainage system. And uh, Hartwood Preserve, former Boys Town property and former uh, DeMarco property south of Pacific will be a great place and it'll take time and there's some great plans that haven't been announced yet and there's some buildings that are going up so yeah i'd love to see that crane moving around and and that building getting completed well it's a 200 million dollar project 260,000 square feet in a three-story building had been stalled out for eight months june will make it nine and now the estimated completion date is sometime in 2023 Campus is being built for about 1,000 employees, 
And if you uh, drive by it, which construction geeks like I do periodically, um, you'll notice that all of the parking is being constructed underground. So when the building is completed, it'll be very beautiful because you won't see a sea of cars at any point in time. You'll just see landscaping and the building from the street. That's a pretty uh, unique amenity for a suburban project. I could see a parking garage. There's, there's talks about some sub, subterrain parking going to happen downtown, but to do it out in West Omaha is is not only is, is it going to be nice, but it's going to be very expensive. American Airlines has announced that it'll begin daily nonstop service between Omaha Epley Airport and New York's LaGuardia Airport beginning November 2nd. Looks like the departure from Omaha will be in the morning. Return from New York City will leave there at about 7.15, arriving here at 9.41. It'll be a 76-passenger Embraer E-175 aircraft. By the way, American already has, in addition to this new LaGuardia nonstop from Omaha, they have nonstops to Charlotte, Chicago, DFW, LAX, Miami, Philadelphia, and Phoenix Sky Harbor. Now, there are a couple of airlines that were offering nonstops to New York City, one to Newark, one to LaGuardia. I'm not sure if those are still going during the pandemic, but certainly before the pandemic and hopefully after. And this is uh, this comes on the heel maybe of about, what, a month ago perhaps, when Allegiant announced an additional nonstop to LAX. So, so maybe uh, with passenger traffic coming back, uh, hopefully we'll – not only get these new ones, but we'll get some of our temporarily dormant nonstops back. Well, and hopefully New York opens more back up and the, there's Broadway shows and all kinds of stuff. And uh, kudos to Omaha for being open and, and remaining open and addressing the issues. Boys Town is tearing down its 73-year-old high school to modernize and create a better education experience for its students. In its place, Boys Town will build a three-story, 110,000-square-foot education center's $30 million project for 350 students completion in 2023. That's a 70 or like probably a 70-year-old old high school, so I think it's I think it's time. <laughs> I tell you what, uh, there's a lot of talk about Father Flanagan being canonized at some point in time. Um, if he if he ever becomes a saint. Um, not that not that we're uh, looking at uh, canonization purely from economic development and tourism perspective, but can you imagine the tourism that Boys Town will get? They'll have to create like the big, what do they call them, like St. Edward Flanagan or something? They'll have to create a big center and all that sort of thing. Oh, for a crazy. second I thought you were saying that, that uh, they're going to weaponize him and he's going to be named, they're going to build a giant cannon. That's something different though, right? Nice try. All right. <laughs> I just wrote it. <laughs> I mean, I'm you, still working on my uh, morning material. He, you know, Trenton, Trenton's got a great sense of humor. He's always making me laugh. He always makes everyone in the office laugh. And uh, one of the funniest guys I know. But even he sometimes, you know, <laughs> drops a lead balloon I take, for a joke. I take comedic risks, all right, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, and even when they're live. Ooh, At any rate, we've got one more story on the docket there, Trenton. Uh, Gretna development. You uh, you found uh, a little bit of information about a kind of a retail mixed use Gretna development happening at Highway Six and Bryan Street. We have a fairway going there. Yeah, they should have started construction already. Uh, uh, Batiste Development out of Topeka, Kansas. Uh, they developed a lo- all the uh, uh, Freddy's frozen custard development. They've done a lot of Starbucks. They've done um, regionally and nationally. They've done some stuff. And they're building this. It's it's right by the uh, elementary high, uh, the elementary and the middle school in Gretna, and they're doing work on the infrastructure now. But it looks like there could be an auto parts store. There could be, um, there should be a, a Casey's and a Fairway Foods, and uh, they got a room for, for a few more things. But that corridor, it's up on the the Highway 631, uh, which basically 204th Street. I'll find it interesting to see how long it takes to connect that hub of Gretna development in and around this eight-acre site that you're talking about at Highway 6 and Bryan Street with the Nebraska Crossing, the Interstate 80 interchange. It's I think it'll fill in pretty fast through there with all the growth we're seeing in the Gretna area. It already already has, and, and most of the land along that corridor is, is in developers' hands. And, you know, this goes all the way north and, and to Center Street. You've got three huge projects 
between F Street and Q Street. There's there's three major ones, and there's a mixed use with tons of residential as well. And that is your News of the Week brought to you by Eagle Mortgage. You can find Eagle Mortgage at 114th and Davenport or online at eaglemortgagecompany.com. When we come back, we're going to bring on Jason and Angie Fisher, developers of the new Farnham Hotel that is getting really close to opening inside the landmark building downtown. Trenton and I toured it this week. It's beautiful. It's like nothing else you're going to see in this marketplace. And if you stick with us, you're going to hear all about it. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAI NP Dodge and DNM Roofing. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. Jeff Beal sitting next to Trenton Maggot from NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. We're also brought to you by DM Roofing. Glad that you have joined us here today. And, and Trenton and I had a nice opportunity a couple of days ago. We toured the brand new Farnham Hotel. This is uh, the hotel that is just about ready to open inside the Landmark building at uh, 13th and Farnham, between uh, Farnham and Harney. And we have with us uh, the developers, Jason and uh, Angie Fisher. Good morning. Welcome to the show. Good morning, guys. Thank you, thank you for, having a lot us. for having us here. Yeah, it's, a, it's great to have you here. And by the way, first of all, thank you for that tour. Um, the, the property is amazing. Absolutely beautiful. Uh, Trent and I both just loved touring it. Can you guys give us a little bit of an overview of what the Farnham is, what it's going to look like, and what sets it apart? Sure. I'll start. Uh, hey, and congrats on the show. You guys do an amazing job. And uh, I subscribe to the YouTube channel. So uh, thank you. Anxious to see Bring that endorsement, too. ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Uh, yeah, the, our journey started uh, in 2018 when a group of investors uh, with us purchased the building. It was an office, 15-story office building, glass, all glass. With the it's the building with the peaks for those that aren't familiar. And originally, we thought we were going to convert some of the vacant floors to luxury apartments. And we ran into some challenges with uh, the mixture of those two uses, office and apartments, and started to explore hospitality. And really didn't want to do uh, it wasn't our intent to get into hospitality, but if we were going to do it, we wanted to do something that was, um, you know, raise the bar for all of Omaha. So we ended up with an autograph collection, uh, Marriott by Marriott, which is, um, you know, their tagline is exactly like nothing else. And so it's the best of both worlds from our perspective. Boutique, we got to develop the brand story and make all the interior decisions, but we get the, you know, largest reservation system uh, in the world right now with with Marriott. So. The la- the journey has been, um, you know, uh, challenging at, 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 at times. And a lot of couples, I think, struggle with, you know, building a house together. And uh, <laughs> uh, we're still married. Still married. And, no, uh, and uh, actually, we've enjoyed every minute. I think we've disagreed about five times. And um, she won all five of those. So it's it turned out good. Five times with 27 subparts, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah, good point. Exactly as it should be. You, you said something about on the tour that, and we, we went through the whole thing, you guys give a great tour, and, and what, what did you say? There was like 20,000, how many boxes do you think that were delivered, all the all the equipment and room, everything? Yeah, what you don't think about, I, I think we have over 1,500 individual SKUs just in furniture, fixtures, and equipment, and then... Uh, then you start bringing in linens and all the hotel stuff, uh, plates, and et cetera. I, the group thinks we're well over 15,000 packages um, to, you know, to stock the hotel. So it's crazy. Okay, Angie. So you you conceive of this a, a repurpose of a, of a very beautiful building that was known as the U- U.S. West building. It was known as, now I think they call it CenturyLink. They, you know, landmark it, building. Yeah, mm-hmm. landmark. And um, so... You put all these pieces together, and, and you know Jason is is obviously an expert and well versed at real estate transaction, very complicated real estate project. But it's also, um, it, it's 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 also you're you're creating a new business. It's a either a license agreement or a franchise with Marriott, and then you have you know all their standards, and then you have branding, and all that kind of stuff. Can you address? How all that goes together, or or at least touch on. I know it's only an hour show. <laughs> yeah, it's an incredibly complex process that I would not have even ventured to guess about prior to getting diving right into it. So, we really started with um, an agreement with Marriott that we wanted to do this. They felt like it was Oops. a good location for this. Well, microphone will malfunction. Yeah, that's all right. 
Um, and so then we started with the development of a brand story. That's the foundation for the whole development of the hotel project. And so you start with this this development story. Ours is really a story about Omaha, which we um, hope is exactly what Omaha needs, kind of in the way of advertisement. Honestly, we think Omaha is this surprising, booming, progressive, entrepreneurial place. And when people come to Omaha, I don't know for all of us who are from here, everyone's surprised when they come here. And so we wanted to kind of encapsulate that surprise and the interest that ha- that Omaha has, the art scene, the music scene, um, just kind of be progressive, but still with with a significant root in Omaha history. So we've brought in a lot of interesting tidbits of Omaha history, starting with uh, Lone Tree Landing is the name of our our um, marketplace where we'll have a barista and all of those things. But Lone Tree Landing is actually the spot where the ferry boat crossed the Missouri River for actually where Omaha was born. So the roots, did not know that. The roots. Yeah. yeah. So we started there and kind of built on that and – you know, we really hope that the um, the feeling and the image that people see and get from being in our space is something that exemplifies kind of how exciting Omaha actually is that people don't know. And Jason, you haven't been, as best I know, you haven't been in the restaurant business, but you decided to start three new restaurants as part of this project, right? Yeah. Yeah. We're a uh, hospitality business and uh, including food and beverage. So yeah, to tag on what Angie said, we the, to develop the brand story, we had uh, consultants come in. They spent ten days, and they learned uh, more about Omaha than, in many cases, I knew. But and there were some themes that started coming out that how sophisticated it was, but it's not stuffy, and how you know culturally uh, rich it, the offerings were. So that's what we're trying to that's what we're trying to bring. That um, led us into the food and beverage space as well, and and a big part of your experience, especially at an autograph collection hotel, is the food and beverage. So in addition to developing the Farnham brand hotel, we developed two restaurant concepts. The, the signature restaurant's called Dynamite. It's centered around a, a this a special uh, natural wood-fired grill and oven called Jade. And big flames, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Big flames. <laughs> big flames. It's and beautiful. It's beautiful. And, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a really elegant space. And uh, the menu is going to be exactly like nothing else in Omaha. There'll be a lot of seafood, obviously a lot of steaks. Um, there's a there's a there's a 46 ounce tomahawk that's they've got a really cool preparation for two people. But um, but you know it's not a steakhouse and um, and it's a real diverse menu that I think people are going to really really like. We were in there and they were they were making um, uh, they took corned beef and they were making Reuben balls. And uh, croquettes, yeah, croquettes, yeah. yeah. That might be a better That's word. The official term, yeah, yeah. But the, but the wood the wood fired oven was not only something that probably makes great cuisine, but my my goodness, it was visually uh, almost shocking because yeah. it's behind this open kitchen bar sort of thing, yeah. and and you look at it and it's huge and there's flames in three different spots. It, it's visually impressive. Yeah, it, and, and you know what? There's a lot of design. We, there's too too many design uh, elements to talk about uh, in this segment. But if you talk about that, we've we've got uh, several several tributes, if you will, to sort of the Mercer family and M's Pub and and um, dynamite, as you would expect. There's charred. There's a smoky element, and one of the things we have, and there's a really dramatic lighting. We've got this uh, high definition dynamite explosion mural on the ceiling. But one of the we had the art installation that we have in the private dining that you saw actually is charred uh, Joyce timber from the M's Pub Fire that our project lead uh, Tim Mettenbring and his lovely wife Betty um, installed for us, and it's dramatic. It's beautiful. It's really you know industrial, cool. And then when you hear the story, I think it's I think it's really cool. And a shout out to Tim Mettenbring, our, our friend who has experience in Hawaii and around the world. And putting together hotels, and he's a big part of your team. I know. Yeah, it's a village to 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 pull this off. You know, Angie and I get to be the uh, well. I'll be the voice. The she can be the face. But um, you know, it it is an immense number of team members that made it all happen, and uh, just really really proud. We're really proud, ladies and gentlemen. You should have seen when I when I asked these two. So what what's your next project? And I don't think they've had time to stop in the last couple of years about what that is. And interested to, to know. 
on top of everything else, and you had nobody had any idea in 2018 or 19, or I guess at the end of 19, but but the the pen the 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 coronavirus hitting. I can only imagine what you were thinking when that happened. Not only are you learning a new trade and a new business and everything else, what, what went through your thought the, the first five months, of, your thought process during the first five months of, of the pandemic? Well, fortunately for us, our timing could have been a lot worse. So we were doing development and we were, you know, sourcing all of our custom furniture and all of those things. And much of that came from overseas. So we did definitely learn a lot about the supply chain and how it works and how it doesn't work. And um, Disruption. Yeah, yeah. we That's had a the, lot the bad part. of When you want to disrupt an industry, you mm-hmm. don't want to have a disrupted supply chain. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. so sure. we did have a lot of issues with that. We had to reselect a lot of different things because the manufacturers closed. And so it definitely created more layers to the already multitude of layers of development. But the good news is it was kind of trial by fire and we're pretty much ready for anything. So if we decide to do another development project down the road, we've got it. I I couldn't say my thoughts on the on the air. But when you asked that question, but on top of it, Angie's a physician out of Lakeside. And so, you know, we had that sort of uh, uh, stress in the background. But, uh, you know, the supply chain thing is something that most people just don't really understand. And we, um, we're going to open May 13th and, you know, that's, uh, you know, later than we wanted and, and it got costlier and there were, there was no way around it. Just the supply chain reselecting, um, air freight in some cases, it just, you know, drove the project costs up, but we have conti- we still have a container with, um, with some, uh, quartz tops that is, sitting in Long Beach, been there for three weeks, and they don't know when we'll see it. So we've had to... It's make, buried. Yeah, it's buried. buried. Yeah. Mm. But and, you know what? In the queue. Yeah. yeah. But we're... Look, uh, timing feels really good right now. I think people are craving experiences. They're going to get one uh, that's different, and we think better uh, than 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 others in the region. And, and um, the response has been incredible when we do tours, and we appreciate you guys coming down. Had a, had a good time with you, so thanks. Well, it's called the Farnham, and it's beautiful. It's inside the landmark building, as they said, opening on May 13th. So when that happens, go and check it out. They mentioned the Dynamite Restaurant, but the, there's the Catalyst Lounge with an outdoor component to it, a lobby lounge and bar and all that. You're going to you're gonna enjoy it. Uh, Jason and Angie Fisher, we appreciate you joining us. Thank our pleasure. You so Thank you. Yeah, and thanks for your investment in our city. Uh, so Jason and Angie Fisher with uh, the Farnham. And uh, we're going to take our middle of the show break. When we come back, we're going to bring on Matt Taylor. Um, He is uh, in charge of the Interrail Food Hall at Exarbon, going to talk to us about some interesting things happening there. All of that and more. So stay with us. You're listening to Grow Omaha on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And we're back. Grow Omaha brought to you by DNM Roofing and NAINP Dodge. And we're now going to bring on Matt Taylor as part of our Noddle Companies Commercial Real Estate Development Spotlight. Noddle Companies is one of the Midwest's premier commercial real estate development companies doing so many big projects in Omaha. And one of those is Exarban Village, Omaha's second downtown, Exarban Village. And one of the big attractions in Exarban Village is the Interrail Food Hall. Matt, good morning and welcome. Good morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, it's good to have you here. Um, Trenton and I are both big fans of of the Interrail Food Hall. You're with Hospitality HQ, uh, which runs the Interrail uh, for Exarban Village. And can you give us an idea about what's new at the food hall? What's going on there these days now that the weather is getting so much nicer? Absolutely. So I think that the conversation is all about what's the future of Omaha What's the future of our hospitality industry? And what can we do to inject some excitement into the community? So I think even more than the food hall, which is bustling with 10 individual restaurants, these are all local guys who are out there making craft food. You can have one communal spot. But here's, here's the real kick. Exarban Village has so many fun activations right now. We just opened up. Orophil, which is a specialty plant store right in the inner rail patio area uh, next to that Power Line Studios. Green Street Cycles is coming to the village. 
But then what we want to do is show everybody what's happening. Entertainment, live music, kids stuff, farmer's market, uh, specialty producers, and, of course, our, our restaurant scene. So on June 12th of this year, Saturday, come out. We're going to have a big event called Vacation in the Village, and we're going to treat everybody to an expose of what we're really doing. We'll also have speakers talking about the future of the hospitality industry in Omaha and why it's so important to have great restaurants in a growing city. What I like about it is is your your collaboration with with Nautil Development and, and the expansion of the of the dog park and, and all the green space around there. So not only do you have the option of, of, of eating within the inner rail, but you can also take it outside. And, and that's pretty unique, isn't it, in Omaha? It is. And, it, you know, I've got a trick up my sleeve. I'm, I'm in Miami right now with the members of the Noddle team, and we are looking at some of the amenities and some of the outdoor markets here. And we're going to bring several of the elements this summer to Exarban Village. Art, interactive experiences outside, live music, bocce ball. A fan volleyball league, which, by the way, I should name drop and thank Bill from Infusion Brewery. Uh, Bill and Liz are going to team up with us and bring a fan volleyball league this summer. It's just out of this world. It's a lot of fun stuff is coming to the village. Uh, we're talking with uh, Matt Taylor, Hospitality HQ, in charge of the uh, Interrail Food Hall at Exarban Village. Matt, what are some of the newer concepts that have opened up in the food hall lately? Oh, we're so excited to welcome uh, Luke Mabey's concept, uh, Culprit Cafe. Uh, everybody loves them from uh, their midtown location and downtown locations. Uh, this is a, a growing young operator who is, is making a name for himself in coffee. We've got them at the food hall now. Uh, pastries, lunch, and here's the thing I didn't know about Culprit. They've got the most amazing corned beef sandwich for lunch. It's, it's out of this world. Uh, and then we also just opened Yogamo, which is a traditional Chinese puff pastry sandwich. And they, they brought in the, the market developer from a major national brand of boba tea, and he's going to run the tea program. Now, they just opened for tea last week. Next week, they'll open for full lunch. Two brand new vendors at NRL. What, um, give, give us an idea of, of the hours and and uh, what to expect uh, at the inner rail. Yeah, absolutely. So we're open seven days a week. Uh, Culprit Cafe opens at 7.30 a.m. Uh, and then our food hall vendors open at 11 a.m. to serve lunch and dinner. Uh, during the week, Sunday through Thursday, open till 9 p.m. And on the weekends, Friday and Saturday, we stay open till 10. Uh, now, here's the thing that's already started. We've got weekly activations. So every day of the week, we will have a new event on the patio. So far, we've got uh, Pint Night, which is on Tuesday nights on the patio. You can meet local brewers, sample their beers, and take a commemorative glass home. We've got Board Game Night, which, by the way, what do you mean? I am the all-time champion, so any challengers come <laughs> see me. <laughs> I won't touch and, that. Uh, that's right. That's right. And and the the number one hit, and I, and I never knew this was such a big thing until we did it. Music bingo on Thursday is, is lighting them up again. We were packed on Thursday, but the outdoor space uh, made it very comfortable for folks to reemerge from entertainment. And uh, we're we're doing it in a safe manner. We're spreading everything out, but it's time to start having some fun again. I think. All right. Well, Matt, we appreciate you joining us. Uh, very excited to spend some time at the Interrail and the rest of Exarban Village uh, this weekend and this summer. This is this is the golden time of year coming up for you guys. And uh, hope you bring back a lot of great ideas from your fact-finding mission to Miami. And we appreciate you joining us today. Thanks so much. Everybody have a great day. All right, Matt Taylor from HQ, or rather Hospitality HQ, runs the Interrail at Exarban Village. Going to take a quick break, the last break, and we come back. It'll be the lightning round by Turner Construction. And I'm looking here at the list. We've got a lot of stuff on there, so don't miss any of it. You're listening to Jeff and Trenton on Grow Omaha, brought to you by D&M Roofing and NAI NP Dodge Commercial Real Estate. Back in a moment on News Radio 1110 KFAB. And welcome back to the show. This is Grow Omaha, brought to you by D&M Roofing and NAI NP Dodge. And it's time for what you've all been waiting for, the lightning round, brought to you by Turner Construction. 
Turner Construction is reshaping Omaha, making it a better place, not only by building amazing buildings, but by helping prepare amazing professionals to go into the construction trades. If you are ever thinking about working in construction or your kid or grandkid is, they could do a lot worse than affiliating with Turner Construction. Also, if you're thinking about doing a project for your company, Turner Construction. Been around forever. They do huge projects, medium projects, and small projects. Their Omaha office is in North Downtown in that really cool Mastercraft building, and they'll take good care of you. And we're proud to have Turner Construction as a sponsor of Omaha's Lightning Round. Okay, we have a new dual branded hotel uh, opening on May 10th at 72nd and Haskell. One half will be Home Two Suites by Hilton. The other half will be True by Hilton, the developer of that project will be with us next week. Javi's Tacos is now open in Lakeside. Original location was at 180th and Q. Still there. I love Javi's Tacos. Yes, yeah, so they have two locations. That, that guacamole is really good, too. Yeah, that place is good. Hey, there's a cool event, Thrift Shopping. Um, thrift Shopping is a, a very unique um, thrift store that uh, deals in all sorts of secondhand items, including some very impressive ones. They're having their spring fling today from 9 a.m. to 1. So it's going on right now. Hurry up after the show is over. Get there. Free food, live music, early bird giveaway, and they are located at 85th and L Street. So spring I think fling. the food isn't re repurposed, though. I think the food is probably fresh. <laughs> You're probably right. You're probably right. Hey, Corner Kick is uh, going to open a third location at 132nd and Dodge in the old Agave Azteca spot. Uh, Aldi has done their site prep work at 192nd and West Center Road. They'll be going vertical pretty soon on an Aldi store. This is Northwest Corner. Laszlo's is nearby, if if that helps people picture it. They've got a lot of locations, though. Nine. This will be their ninth, wow. ninth location in town. And, Trenton, we've got some development at 204th and Roberts Road. Um, this is kind of uh, – it's a little bit north of Dodge. You know, there's a bunch of uh, fast food restaurants in a Menards. You go a little bit north of there, and you have a new McDonald's that's under construction. And then across the street, there's a CHI Health project that is underway as well in that area. There's a isn't there, there's a Roberts Road in, in Papillion or La Vista, too. Is there? I'm yeah. not sure. Very confusing. Yeah. Uh, but at any rate, so yeah, uh, you uh, you could you could uh, go have your uh, blood pressure checked at CHI, and then yeah. go grab a Big Mac afterwards, and then go and get your blood pressure checked again. <laughs> he said it, not me. Okay, there's a 150,000 square foot warehouse going up at 69th and F Street. That's an industrial area, uh, just kind of snuggled in there behind the Union Pacific Railroad mainline tracks. 13.5 million dollar project on a 12 acre site. Have nice 32-foot ceilings, which we like. Yeah, that'd be modern. In industrial buildings. The uh, the house has been removed at 40th and Farnham Street that heretofore was standing in the way of the future Bearshin uh, Restaurant and Beer Garden. And and Bearshin has, it's either Bearshin or Bearshin or something like that. Um, I, I, I don't pronounce all my European words as well as I should, but uh, they have a location in Benson which I understand is very popular. This is going to be the Blackstone location, a 3,000-foot restaurant. We'll also have a meeting room, and then the the feature for them will be a rooftop deck. That's pretty big and should be pretty activated. Speaking of Midtown house removal, did you see on the way here that it's been a week or two, but they removed the house. I think it's about Hackberry, so it would be um, on Underwood oh, on, yeah. on that where that kind of splits off. In Fair Acres. Um, yeah, in Fair Acres. I can only imagine what that costs to tear, to buy, tear down a house, and uh, rebuild in that neighborhood. I can only imagine what the new one they're going to put there might look like. Exactly. It'll be fun to see how nice that is. Um, hey, the uh, we've been talking the last couple of weeks about the Grow Omaha Weekly Market Report. It is our e-newsletter that we send out every Thursday. And we've been telling you that if you signed up for it and haven't been getting it, make sure you add news at Grow Omaha to your approved senders list. Also, the announcement we have for you today is that we take those old or past newsletters and uh, later that day, after they come out every Thursday morning, so Thursday night, Friday morning, we put them on the website. So if you go to growomaha.com 
and click on Market Report, you can see all three of them that we've done so far. They're going to come out every week, every Thursday. Uh, and if you're not on the list, for God's sake, sign up. Uh, when you're there at growmaha.com slash market report, there's a place you can put in your name and your email address, and you can have that sent to you as well. The newsletter is off the charts. I mean, we've got uh, yeah. we've got people like uh, – if if it's five minutes later coming out than it was last week, Trenton's got people blowing up his phone saying, "Where is it? Send me the newsletter." Yeah, and Jeff is is the force behind that newsletter, and, and he the last three weeks he's got it out on time, and and uh, we're always looking for good information. So if you send anything, if you want to subscribe and you just want it the easy way out, and go to news at uh we'll get it and uh, we'll add you to that mailing. But for a lot of you that you think you should have it and you haven't gotten it, please go to your spam folder and add us to your address book, uh, news at uh, gromha.com. And so you may already have it. Yeah, that's happened quite a few times. It, it comes from a, a CRM system. And so whenever you send out emails in bulk, a lot of uh, email systems are sensitive to those. And so they, they automatically flag it. So at any rate, um, if you want it, Go to growomaha.com and hit the market report. And then also, like we said, the YouTube channel is up and running, and uh, we're putting videos on there every week, um, including the new construction video. Some of the uh, construction projects that Brad talked about in that video are pretty exciting, Trenton. And one of them that he mentioned that I had kind of forgotten about lately is this apartment project on the southeast corner of the Med Center. It's going to be like a six-story, huge apartment building. Isn't that amazing? I mean, we, we need it. And keep in mind, we've talked a lot about it on the show, but when this next project, this $2.6 billion project just east of Saddle Creek, uh, in addition to the administration building that Nebraska Medicine is doing on the west side of Saddle Creek, we need those apartment units. Absolutely. And then I mentioned this. I've mentioned this the last couple of weeks, but I'm going to mention it again because uh, whenever I come to the radio show, I drive by the crossroads, and that's where the swivel apartment project is yeah. going up on the east side. Looks like they're now on the fourth floor. It's eventually going to be a five-story building. And and I think that's a sign of what's to come in that area. You're going to see more and more of the four- and five-story buildings in that whole 72nd and Dodge corridor and a lot less of the one-story buildings as the area densifies and becomes more you know, populated, active, and lively. And that's what the master plan for Omaha is. If, if you look at it, you'll see 72nd and Dodge shows – taller buildings and and you'll see that at at the crossroads project yeah and just a little bit to the west we talked about uh, a month or two ago about the clove apartment project this is on the site of the former village inn that was at about what maybe 78th and dodge just saw a building permit go out recently so it looks like some of the early building permits for that project are now starting to come out and I, we could have mentioned this in the um, Noddle Company's commercial real estate development spotlight earlier, but saw a building permit go out recently for Blackstone townhomes, which would be oh, a pretty awesome. do. Condos. Oh, okay. So the music is playing, which means that Jeff and Trenton have to stop talking. But only for this week. We'll be back. I'm Jeff Beals. And I'm Trenton Maggot. You've been listening to Grow Omaha, brought to you by NAINP Dodge and D&M Roofing. We'll chat with you next week at 9 o'clock right here on News Radio 1110 KFAB. If you like this video, be sure to hit those like and subscribe buttons. And remember, Grow Omaha is not just media. This is a mission. We are trying to build up Omaha and make it an even better place. We can only do that with your help. Share this video with your friends, neighbors, and family.